Hello, welcome back. It's the, the Ballads 2023 coming to you from Plus TV Africa. We are taking the conversation next to uh, education, and we have two guests uh, joining us. Uh, joining us via Zoom is Bola Oyele, an educator, and Professor Luis Nzegu, Professor of Business School and former Director, International Business Resource Center. Uh, many thanks for joining us, lady and gentleman. Thank you for joining us. Mm. Thank you. Um, let's start with um, ladies first. We'll, we'll try to <laughs> make sure that you start with the lady. Um, let's talk with uh, Mrs. Oyele. It's important that we understand the depth of education in Nigeria. Um, first things first, we have over 10 plus million out of school children. Uh, we're hoping that uh, in 2024 and the years beyond, we would be able to reduce that number. And we haven't even begun to scratch the surface when it comes to the SDG goals in terms of education. Why do you think that Nigeria has continuously lagged behind in this regard? Well, let me get something out of the way, because I noticed that there's a bit of a hesitation in knowing what to call me. I am Dr. Wiele. <laughs> so, yeah, let's get out of the way. Um, but here's the thing. The question I have for all of us as Nigerians is this. Why is it election years that we start to wonder about the things that happen in our country? It's usually because we think there's someone who's going to get in position and do something miraculous. But there is no such magic bullet. This is an everyday thing. You quoted a number. The, the question is, what has led to this number of children being out of school, being uneducated, we don't speak about those, but we want on this day to start addressing those things. So my view is that we continue to lag behind because we wait for one person to come fix things, whereas these problems are everyday problems. The education system in Nigeria is not the purview, really, for the most part, of the federal government. They have the unity schools and those. But the education in Nigeria is the purview of the local government, who are not having an election today, and the state government, who are not having an election today. So the problem, if we're going to fix it, cannot be a one-day thing when we're waiting for someone to come fix things. Our policies are set for the most part. Whoever comes in today, we can only hope, provides a vision that catalyzes the other systems of education that we have to move forward. But let's stop this one day discussion. Every single day is a day we must wonder why we keep lagging behind. Mm. Right. I, I love how you put it, but... Um, it, to say that we, these conversations are not being had is, is, is um, you know, not being fair to the people who are in the forefront of fighting or advocating for good education. Now, let's, let me show you where I'm going to. Um, every single year we celebrate World Education Day or Day of the Girl Child or something, and we always pivot in the direction of education. And I'm not in any way saying that there, we should not have these conversations every day, but... Um, when I was younger, we had the, you know, the Directorate of Education, or I mean, those people who monitored schools. Uh, primary education was a beautiful thing. We, I went to public school. But today, can we say that you can send your child to public education, to public schools? These people who are in charge of the education, whether it be at local government or state levels, how accessible are they? They come out and give us these very bogus figures and tell us that they're doing this and that. But if we go and look at it, nothing's been done. So again, should we say that we're not doing our jobs or are we not pushing as much as we should? Let me go to a thing that I think a previous speaker talked about. Understanding our democracy is important. If I know that the person that's supposed to put a school in my neighborhood is a local government and i everybody pays attention to that when they're running for election we know what they did we know what they didn't do we know what each section of government is supposed to provide and we focus on that rather than is my kinsman there 
is my sister's mother's son there? And we, how much of the how much of the national cake or the state cake or the local government cake can come to me personally? If we know, if our education is geared towards the system that we run, and our children know who's responsible for what, and our secondary school kids know who's responsible for what, then we know where to go. But at this point, we have no idea what the thing is anymore. You spoke about the inspectors of education. I remember them too, except my, my, my younger brothers went to a school that was called Local Authority 1 and Local Authority 2. And we knew who was in charge of that. But then we adopted this new thing we have, and we don't understand it. And we're not teaching our kids history, and we're not teaching them enough social studies. So we will never be able to know where the problem is. And we treat our political roles like chieftaincy titles. So once I get it, everybody's afraid to challenge me because they think it's something I should hold forever. Mm. It's really more than we pick a problem here, we pick a problem there. Oh. It is fundamental to who we are as Nigerians, that we understand the system that we run, that we hold people accountable, that we see what's going on around us. When I say what's going on around us, I don't mean the Western countries. I mean what's going on in African countries. Oh. We're smaller than us, less endowed than us. All right, let's bring uh, Professor Nzego into the conversation Thank right you. now. Yeah, Marian talked about, uh, you know, uh, going to public school. I also attended a public school. But right now, the, the issue right now is that uh, most parents are taking their children to uh, private school because of uh, the disaster we have in public education in Nigeria, except for maybe a state like Lagos, you know, where the state government actually is accessing the UBE. There's a UBE fund, and uh, various state governments are supposed to provide some sort of equity contributions before they can actually access the funds. You know, Marianne talked about uh, out-of-school children. You know, one of the reasons why people might not even stay in school is because they don't even have the facility to take care of this to the infrastructure and all of that. Some some states, if you go to some state, what you see, there's uh, students uh, having their, their classes under the, under the trees. Some are just uh, sitting on bare floors. Uh, there, there are phones uh, provided by the University of Basic Education, uh, the UBEC. But these states are not accessing the funds because uh, the state governments are not channeling funds into uh, their own contribution to getting those funds from the federal government. How do we resolve all of that? Uh, thank you, Martin. I think you said Justin. 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 Yeah. You said that. I went to public school anyway. To mm. when I was in Nigeria. We all did. So. <laughs> we all did. <laughs> we all did. Okay. But the biggest problem is that yeah. I will look at, for example, when um, um, ministers like um, Egu and mm. ministers like Zaba Hamed were in power, uh, they have a good leadership. And those leadership, for example, built on, on experience. So I think uh, one of the biggest challenges we have in here, in terms of even though we have the funding, we don't have enough funding in mm. education today, as I said today. We have not actually met the UN United Nations goal. Mm. You know, we are at about 7.5% of this goal. Mm. Uh, whereby, for example, the United like States say 15 to 30%. Mm. So that's a part. And then when these funds are given, just like you mentioned, you know, uh, it's corrupt. So uh, uh, leaders, for example, those people, for example, that are giving these funds are not trying in the own way. Uh, even though, for example, you went to public, uh, public schools, I know for sure during that particular time, you know, there was uh, free education. At the same time, also, there was some food for people in you know, that particular period. But right now, when you look at people are going to private, educate, private schools, they are going there. Remember again that not enough Nigeria can afford that, the private schools. And so the only way now we can be able to solve this particular problem is, to, is the leadership. You know, in terms of whoever going to handle that particular funds. How do I mean by leadership, for example? I mean, it starts from the head. It starts from the Minister of Education. It starts also, you know, from, you know, leader programs that we're going to be able to develop. Uh, curriculum is also very, very important. Oh, yes. Very more important. Uh, just like uh, Bola mentioned about curriculum, we need to teach our students liberal arts. When you look at, you know, Nigeria, Nigeria is on the last, on the bottom of the list mm. in the world. Yeah. We are on the bottom of the list in terms of children that are out of school. Mm. Yeah. And then that means, for example, if you are in that bottom of that particular list, it all means that you know, policies are not being implemented the way it's supposed to be implemented. You know, about 27 million of Nigerians, children, mm. for example, are poorly educated. Mm. They are poorly educated. And because they are poorly educated, they mean, for example, the curriculum they are being developed are not being enhanced. So teachers, for example, need to be trained. We need to train our teachers so they can be able to implement 
you know, those policies that are being spent, because it's how to implement those policies are the key issue here. Mm. Um, talking about uh, the fact that, uh, you know, uh, these um, the policies are not being implemented or teachers are not, are not being trained, etc., yes. etc. Et there are people who, the pundits who would say that um, these strategies are not hard to implement or these policies are not hard to be implemented, but it, it's a calculated attempt by those in power to keep Nigerians on a certain level uh, so that things, that we, things like what we've seen today would yes. continue to happen which will be beneficial to the political class. I don't know how true that is. I think yeah, the problem now is what is just seen today. Remember again that the education is for the rights of human beings in every country we are. There's no doubt about it. You know, education, for example, gives you the knowledge, gives you the skill, gives it all you need. Uh, what we see today basically are not the true aspect of what we get from our education. We see the different, you know, ball game of what education can provide, and so until we are able to enhance that particular curriculum, teach people the knowledge, teach people the skill they need, then we're going to be still having this problem we're having today. You know, this toggery that we see around, you know, especially in places like Lagos. Mm. All right. Okay. Let's uh, get uh, Doctor Abola Oyeleye. Uh, uh, you seem to be nodding your head. I don't know if it was in agreement or if you're uh, not um, agreeing with what we're saying. Let's just get your inputs right now, Dr. Oyele. I agree with what he said a lot. The part that I want to bring into it is this. We keep using the word leadership. And when we use leadership, it sort of absolves us of our responsibilities. But where does leadership come from? Our leadership, they rise from among us. So when a government creates a system, who runs the system? The average Nigerian. The average Nigerian is the one who decides whether they're going to open your file or not. The average Nigerian is the one who decides if they're going to teach that thing that the curriculum said. I mean, I have a lot to say about the curriculum, not today. But what I am hoping we also take from this conversation is this to build the Nigeria that we want. Each of us must recognize that we need to change something. Mm. The government cre creates a train, the average Nigerian decides they're going to have extra ways to, to, to teach people out of the train fares. I'm saying that he is right, the curriculum is not right. Uh, the people who put in charge don't have a love for this country. We still think our country is a cake to be shared. <laughs> Once all of those things are correct, but the average Nigerian must recognize we must change. We like our, we want things to change, but we like all our perks. We want to continue to do the things we want to do. Mm. So I agree with him a lot. But then I say, it's you, it's me. It's me not buying exam papers. It's me not... Um, siphoning the money. It's me doing the job Monday through Friday that I am hired to do. It's me inspecting those schools without asking them for money ahead of time. Mm. It's us, every one of us. The curriculum, the people in school, the infrastructure, it doesn't matter really what, this go what any government does. The mm. average Nigerian can get there and dismantle it. Mm. And so far, a lot of what we're seeing is each of us saying, let me get my own, let me get my own, let me get my own. And then the people on the bottom have nothing. How many well, leaders do we have? Are they up to a million? <laughs> well, there's 200 million of the rest of us. A handful of them. So it's a handful the 200 of them. million, I'm sorry? It's a handful of them. Exactly. So if the rest of us are the ones that work in the ministry, the ones that work in the banks, the ones that work in the schools, if we're doing everything that we're supposed to do, Yes. Our own good deeds mm. will overpower their own bad deeds. Right, and they will have to follow. We, we, have, to, us are doing we have to go deeds. for a very quick break. Please stay with us. Um, uh, we're also being joined by Akia Kikbelu. He's the principal consultant of uh, Edu Hub. When we come back after the news break, we, we're still going to be talking about education. Stay with us, please. Hello, hope you enjoyed the news. Please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit the notification button so you get notified about fresh news updates.